So here's question 11 from step 3 from 2021. Uh, this is one of the probability and statistics questions, and I think these are in some ways easier than the pure maths uh, problems if you if you like uh, probability. Uh, so don't overlook those. A lot of people do just do the pure problems in step. But if you like probability, uh, the probability questions are really good to have a go at as well. In this one, we've got the continuous random variable x with this probability density function uh, as given here. Uh, so f of x is equal to uh, lambda e to the minus lambda x. You may or may not recognize that uh, as an exponential distribution. Certainly no need to know that at all for this question. We'll just be using A-level techniques to solve everything here. Uh, so uh, it says the random variable y is the greatest integer less than or equal to x and z is equal to x minus y. So if you're doing this question, it's really worth just spending a few seconds, minutes even, to uh, get your head around what's going on here. Um, I think perhaps it's easier even to write this as uh, x is equal to uh, y plus z. And so y is the greatest integer less than or equal to x, and then z is kind of what's left over. So x uh, has, uh, as possible values, z zero, uh, upwards, right? So um, we could think of a discrete random variable that took the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, uh, and so on up to infinity, uh, and that would be y, right? And then uh, z will be the bit that's left over. So if a, uh, the outcome for x, say, an observation is here, maybe it's like 3.3 .3 or something, then y is going to be uh, 3 and z is going to be 0 0.3, right? If x comes out to be 1.2, then y is going to be 1. Uh, and z is going to be 0 0.2. And this question is just going to be about splitting x into these parts, the integer part and what's left over. So in part 1, it says show that for any non-negative integer n, the probability that y is equal to n is given by uh, this uh, formula here. And so uh, we're going to work in terms of uh, x, right? So the probability that y is equal to n then is the probability that uh, x Right, so if, if y is 2, say, right, uh, then that means x could be anywhere between 2 and 3, um, not, not including 3. Uh, so uh, this is the same as the probability that um, x is between uh, n and m plus 1 in general, and you might want me here to say strictly less than uh, for this one, but because we're dealing with a continuous random variable, it doesn't actually affect the probabilities whether I write less than or less than or equal to there. So forgive me if I interchange those where you think it might be more appropriate to have a strict inequality or or, or a non-strict one. So uh, so what we have here then uh, is a probability that we just know from continuous random variables that we work out as an integral. So I'm going to integrate between n and m plus 1 the PDF of x so that's lambda e to the minus lambda x uh, dx. And fairly easy integral to do here then. Um, I just get minus e to the minus lambda x. If you're doing step three problems, you should be able to do this integral uh, no problem at all. Uh, and I'm going to do that between uh, n uh, and n plus 1. And so uh, if I substitute in n plus 1 here, I get minus e to the minus lambda n plus 1. Then I subtract what I get when I substitute in n, so that's minus minus, so plus e to the minus lambda n, and we're going to factorize this. So this is minus uh, e to the minus lambda times uh, e to the minus lambda n plus e to the minus lambda n, and this little factorization is one we're using a lot in this question, so just make sure you've got that very clearly uh, in your head there. And this is then e to the minus lambda n uh, times e uh, minus e to the minus lambda uh, plus 1, as it's written here. And of course, that's exactly the same as uh, the answer that's written here. 1 minus e to the minus lambda times e to the minus lambda n. And that's part 1 done. So in part 2, it says, show that the probability that z is less than z is given by this expression for any uh, z between 0 and 1. Now remember, z is the bit that's left over, not the integer part of x, but the part that's left over. So for example, for you know z to be less than 0 0.3, that means you know x could be uh, between 0 uh, and 0 0.3. It could be between 1 and 1.3. could be between 2 and 2.3. And if I sort of add all of these possibilities together, that'll be the combined um, 
you know, way of getting a z to be less than 0.3. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for that fractional part of the number to be smaller than 0.3. Um, and that's exactly uh, how we're going to express this then. I'm going to write the probability that z um, is less than z. Sorry, my capital Z and my little z might end up looking a bit similar here. Um, should be obvious from the context which one is which, but try to keep them separate when you write it out, of course. Uh, so I'm going to sum from zero to infinity uh, this uh, probability that the random variable x is between n uh, and n plus z. Right, so what I'm writing down here is just uh, it's just exactly this. This is small z here, okay? Um, so uh, now that probability we can express just uh, as the uh, integral uh, exactly as before. So right, I've got the integral between n and n plus z uh, and the PDF of uh, x remember is here, uh, lambda e to the minus lambda uh, x dx. So this integral we're going to do just in exactly the same way as we did it in uh, part one. I'm going to compute this uh, easy integral here, minus e to the minus lambda x between n and uh, m plus z. Uh, and then we're going to uh, see what we're left with here. So I've got uh, the sum from 0 to infinity of minus e to the minus lambda uh, m plus z and then I've got um, minus minus so plus e to the minus uh, lambda uh, n here and so I've got to factorize out uh, again the e to the minus lambda n exactly uh, as we did before and this time we just get 1 minus e to the minus lambda uh, z in here. Okay, uh, so now notice that this second bracket doesn't depend on n at all, so I can just take that uh, out of the sum. So it's 1 minus e to the minus lambda z uh, times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of e to the minus lambda n. And now this uh, sum here, if you think about it, is actually a geometric progression. If we start working out the terms, right, if I put n equals 0 in here, I just get 1. Um, n equals 1, I get e to the minus lambda, then I get e to the minus 2 lambda, e to the minus uh, 3 lambda. So I'm multiplying from one term to the next here, I'm just multiplying by e to the minus lambda. Okay, so, uh, so the sum is a GP with first term a as 1 and common ratio e to the minus lambda, so it's sum to infinity, is a over 1 minus r is 1 over 1 minus e to the minus lambda, and that gives us exactly uh, the denominator of the fraction that we're looking for. Um, so we get this is a 1 minus e to the minus uh, lambda z over 1 minus e to the minus lambda, uh, and I could just write here uh, as required. Perhaps I should have written that in the first question as well, just to show that we, we know we've got to the answer that we've been asked to show. I remember in step questions with uh, show that parts in them, you can do later parts even if you haven't managed to get the earlier parts, uh, because you've been given the important parts of the answer that you need. That's part of the reason they're given to you, so you can still get partial answers perhaps in some of these questions. So in part three here, we're going to use the answer from part two to evaluate the expectation of z, and we're going to use uh, the formula that you should be familiar with, that for a continuous random variable, to get the expectation, we take z times um, the PDF uh, of, uh, of z, and I'm going to integrate that with respect to z, um, again, actually, this the subscript here is a capital Z, and this one is the little Z. This is just saying this is the PDF of the random variable capital Z, and this is Z. It's argument that's being integrated here, uh, and we we integrate that across the whole uh, all, all the possible values for Z. So here, that's everything between zero and one. Now, what is the PDF? Well, um, this probability Z is less than Z. Again, it's a continuous variable, remember, so this is the same as z less than or equal to z. Uh, that's the CDF, so to get the PDF, I just differentiate this. Okay, so f uh, of z here, I'm differentiating. Uh, well, okay, the, the the 1 minus e to the minus lambda on the bottom is just a constant, right? So you can think of this function as, you know, as, uh, as 1 over this multiplied by uh, 1 minus e to the minus lambda z. So, okay, I get uh, the 1 on the top is going to differentiate to 0 and then differentiating minus e to the minus lambda z, I just get uh, lambda then uh, e to the minus lambda z, and then 1 minus e to the minus lambda as that constant still being there. So this 
um, for this expectation then I'm just going to integrate between 0 and 1 uh, lambda times, so z times this, so let's say lambda z e to the minus lambda z over 1 minus e to the minus lambda dz and I've got a nice integration by parts to do here then uh, let's pull out the 1 minus e to the minus uh, lambda here um, I'll write it to the minus 1 so I don't have to keep writing fractions and so I'm just going to try and do the integral between 0 and 1 of uh, z times lambda e to the minus lambda z dz so I've got uh, an integration by parts so uh, using the usual formula that if we have uh, for integration by parts that the integral of u v dash is uv minus the integral of u dash v if we write u as z here and uh, v dash is lambda e to the minus lambda z you, know, you could pull that lambda out of the integral here but it helps us slightly to have it in this uh, in here right because when I integrate this uh, I just get minus e to the minus lambda z an integral that we're getting very familiar with as we go through this question and u primed of course is just one okay so um, so doing this integration by parts uh, that would be so I've got this constant on the outside still 1 minus e to the minus lambda to the minus 1 and then inside here I've got u times v so I've got to do minus z uh, e to the minus uh, lambda z and I'm going to do that between 0 and 1 and then minus uh, minus uh, here so uh, just plus the integral between 0 and 1 of 1 times e to the minus lambda z dz um, by the way uh, you, know, you should write math down the page more than I'm doing uh, here I'm just uh, being um, a bit uh, untidy here by going down and across so I can try and get it all on uh, one screen here for the video um, so uh, I'm sure if you're doing step you're well practiced in that sort of thing anyway so okay if I substitute 1 and 0 into here I get minus 1 times e to the minus lambda so that's just minus e to the minus lambda and then uh, when I put 0 in I get 0 so that's everything there and then I'm going to do this integral so I'm going to get minus 1 over lambda e to the minus lambda z between 0 and 1 okay let's go on to a new line down here so I've got 1 minus e to the minus lambda to the minus 1 multiplied by minus e to the minus lambda and then again when I put 1 in here I'm going to get minus 1 over lambda e to the minus lambda and when I put 0 in I'm going uh, e to the minus lambda z is going to be uh, 1 so I've got minus minus so plus 1 over lambda here and we might want to do a bit of tidying uh, up here um, I could factorize out uh, something here I could factorize out maybe what should I do 1 over lambda uh, and then I've got 1 minus e to the minus lambda and then I've got this first minus e to the minus lambda and I'm doing this because remember this uh, term outside 1 over 1 minus e to the minus lambda that will now cancel with this one so this is just 1 over lambda from the first term and then I've got minus e to the minus lambda over 1 minus e to the minus lambda and that's quite a nice form for the expected value of z um, as long as you've got a reasonably simplified form um, there are different ways you could write this out and you could get full marks for not writing it exactly as I've done there but I think that's a nice form to write the answer in there. In part 4 I've just put part 1 and part 2 on the screen as well because we're going to be using those as we go along here uh, but it says obtain an expression for probability that y equals n and z1 is less than z is less than z2 um, and uh, then we'll see if y and z are independent as a result so what we have here uh, if we've been paying attention we should be able to pretty quickly uh, know what this means for x right if y is n and z is between z1 and z2 right remember uh, we've got that um, x is equal to y plus z so this is just saying that the integer part of y is is n and the non-integer part is uh, you know between z point, uh, z1 and z2 right so if these are decimals it's you know x just has to be somewhere between n point z1 and you know n point z2 or whatever so I'll obviously we write that as n plus z1 and n plus z2 right so so the probability that we're looking for here right the probability y equals n uh, and z1 is less than z uh, is less than z2 right that's just the probability that uh, x is between uh, n plus z1 uh, and uh, n plus uh, z2 so we can just uh, compute that uh, as before using the PDF that we have 
uh, for x, right? So I've got the integral between m plus z1 and m plus z2 of lambda e to the minus uh, lambda x uh, dx. And again, apologies for not writing down the page, but this is the uh, integral of uh, minus, so, so it's integrating, I get minus e to the minus lambda x, and I'm going to go between m plus z1 uh, and m plus z2. So I get minus e to the minus lambda uh, n plus z2 uh, plus e to the minus lambda m plus z1. And doing the factorization here as we've been doing all the time, I'm just going to get e to the minus lambda n times e to the minus lambda z1 minus e to the minus lambda uh, z2. And that's the expression that we're looking for. So actually that part of the question isn't too bad. Now, determine whether z and y uh, are independent. Well, uh, we've got the you know the basic independence result that we're going to use here that we know random variables are independent if the probability of a and b is the probability of a times the probability of b there are other ways of phrasing this to do with conditional probabilities as well uh, but this is our you know first go-to uh, for showing independence usually and we've got here something that's of the form the probability of uh, you know uh, something to do with y and um, this sort of general uh, event to do with uh, z here. So uh, all I want to do now is work out the probability of these things individually and we'll see if this formula holds, right? Well, okay, in fact we haven't got much working out to do, right? Because we've already got that the probability that y equals n from part 1 here is 1 minus e to the minus lambda times e to the minus n lambda, so nothing to do there. And the probability that uh, z1 is less than uh, z is less than z2, right? Well, that's just the probability that z is less than z2 minus the probability that z is less than z1, some basic um, sort of arguments that we use a lot in probability here, nothing fancy at all going on here, right? And um, we uh, have those probabilities from part two, right? So this is uh, one minus e to the minus lambda z2 over one minus e to the minus lambda minus one minus e to the minus lambda z1 over 1 minus e to the minus lambda. And uh, so we've got that the probability that y equals n multiplied by the probability that z1 is less than z is less than z2. Right, so I've just got to multiply these two things together then. I've got 1 minus e to the minus lambda, e to the minus lam n lambda. And perhaps you can see where this is going now. I've got 1 minus e to the minus lambda uh, z2 over 1 minus e to the minus lambda minus 1 minus e to the minus lambda z1 over 1 minus e to the minus lambda and uh, I can cancel here then this 1 minus e to the minus lambda okay uh, and uh, actually here I also got 1 minus 1 so uh, so they they cancel out here and I'm just left with uh, e to the minus uh, lambda n on the outside here and I've got a plus e to the minus uh, lambda z1 minus e to the minus lambda z2 right and that's exactly uh, what we've got here, right, so that is the probability that y equals n and z1 is less than z is less than z2, so we've shown that this probability statement of that independence holds, and so we can say then, uh, hence uh, y and z are independent, um, because we've got these very general statements about the random variable, about events for the random variable um, y and z, and this independent statement holding and so I think you know step problems are incredibly difficult and this is a tough problem some algebra to work through but I do think that just the complexity of the algebra is just a bit less for the probability and statistics questions so if you've got a good grasp on probability um, running through one of these questions it's probably slightly more straightforward than doing some of the really hard pure questions but let me know what you think in the uh, comments below whether you're going to be doing the uh, pure ones or the applied questions what mix you're going to do i know a lot of people do like to just do the pure questions um, and that is a valid option as well um, but there we go really hope that was useful and good luck if you're taking step i've got uh, quite a few more videos that i've made like this um, are archived over at the Mathsaurus website um, along with the past step papers and boundaries and things and also loads of uh, free maths challenge courses you can take perhaps if you're looking ahead and you're still doing the senior maths challenge you might find something of use over there as well so do take a look um, and i will see you soon